Ishara-san, you are the director of training for Dale Carnegie in Japan. What do you do in your job? Uh, my major responsibilities include mainly two things. One is maintain high quality on the content and also maintain high quality on the trainers. That's my main responsibilities. Tell us a little bit about the contents and then tell us a little bit about the trainers. Okay. Uh, we uh, create the contents in the US mainly. We have a special team in uh, Carnegie University and what we call learning and organizational development team. So you have a team of specialists yes. at the Carnegie University developing curriculum basically. Right. And they have a special designers mm -hmm. and they create the contents mm -hmm. and not just create the contents, they actually test the contents in the real classes mm -hmm. for two, hour, uh, two years. Mm. Oh, so this is before they release them That's to right. the training right. organizations. Yeah. And they release it and they split it into uh, global mm -hmm. and then we take it and we actually localize the contents for the, the Japanese environment. Oh, so you're getting the curriculum from the uh, Dalkani University, you get it to Japan, and how do you localize it? What do you do with yeah. that? So what we call global reach and local touch. Okay. Yes, uh, that means you know we can uh, deliver the program anywhere in the global, mm -hmm. and, but, and also, we're going to be able to localize the contents to the local environment. For example, their English and Japanese language is different. Yeah. And, um, and the, also the culture is kind of different. Yeah. So we're going to be able to adopt yeah. the Japanese environment. Mm -hmm. And I, well, you've got Japanese trainers delivering it as well. So I guess that's also another level of natural localization right there, isn't it? That's right. So there, we have uh, 40 trainers. And also, the 80% of the trainers are Japanese, mm -hmm. native Japanese speakers. Mm -hmm. So we have really localized training. Mm -hmm. We'll talk a little bit about the, the trainer development that you talked about before in terms of yes. looking after that. Yeah. So basically, our trainers has to be professional business person okay. before they become a trainers, okay. I mean teachers. Yeah. And also, they have to go through the uh, process, certification process, mm -hmm. what we call trainer academy, mm -hmm. which is 250 hours process. 250 hours long. Yes. That's a serious process. Yes. And also, it's controlled by ISO 9001 certification process. Okay. Right. So it's very rigorous then. Right. And the uh, trainer academy consists of a, a core competency training event, which is boot camp. We teach trainer candidate about how to present in front of the, the classroom mm -hmm. and also how to engage, how to facilitate mm -hmm. with the, uh, uh, the participants mm -hmm. and also how to feedback and how to coach participants mm -hmm. to build their uh, uh, leadership and to build their uh, self-confidence. Mm -hmm. That's what we do. Mm -hmm. And we spend more than five days, five full days mm -hmm. with our uh, co-confidence training and that's really tough event, mm -hmm. yeah. And when they pass the co-competence event, they go into the uh, what we call product endorsement event, mm -hmm. which is we create the uh, kind of a, uh, a real class. Mm -hmm. We invite the uh, people from outside. Mm -hmm. They don't know anything about the Dale Carnegie, mm -hmm. so it, this is a real class. Mm -hmm. And train a candidate has to de uh, deliver the contents in the, in the real situation, mm -hmm. interacting with the participants. Mm -hmm. And we, as a, a, a master trainers, sit in the back mm -hmm. and check the, uh, the how trainer goes, how, to, how they do that, mm -hmm. and then coach them a lot. Mm -hmm. And also, that's a very tough event, mm -hmm. yes. So you said that you needed the trainers to have a business background. Why don't you just hire so-called professional trainers? You know, if someone joined the company, went into an um, internal trainer role for 10 years or something, a so-called professional trainer. Why do you not look for those sorts of people? Right. Uh, our training is really based on business context. So which means trainer has to teach people based on the business knowledge, business experience. For example, if trainer doesn't have any experience on sales, yeah. trainer cannot teach sales how to sell, yeah. right? If a trainer doesn't have any experience as leaders, mm -hmm. 
or managers, they can't teach leaders. So we really select people carefully based on their business experience. And after they go through boot camp and they go through the endorsement, what happens after that? Is there continuous training after that or certification events after that or recertification? After uh, endorsement events, they're not still uh, solo trainers. Oh, okay. Right. So we have to do a uh, tandem mm -hmm. process, mm -hmm. which means the, uh, uh, in a real class, mm -hmm. they have to be able to deliver the courses with senior trainers okay. right, to maintain the quality of the, the mm -hmm. classes. And uh, minimum, they have to do uh, at least two times in tandem. Mm -hmm. And then uh, they can be a solo trainers. So when you're talking about courses, this is not like a one-day course they've got to do, right? This is uh, multiple weeks of course. That's right. Usually we do eight-week or ten-week class. So tandem means twice means like four months right. of, of actual right. in the classroom, right. senior trainer there being coached again. Yeah, it's wrong. Oh, yeah. yeah, that's a long <laughs> trip, yeah. So after that, uh, not just uh, uh, their solo trainer, right? So the solo trainer, but uh, they have to attend at least one time for a uh, uh, trainer recertification event. Oh, this is official recertification event annual. Right. Annually, we do the event, and they have to attend, and they actually we assess them based on the core competency. What if they don't turn up? Uh, they're actually, they're not, they can't even train anymore. Oh, they're out, right? right. So yeah, if you want to keep going, you've got to be there. That's right. Right, okay. And what about, apart from that, is there any sort of regular coaching for the trainers? Yep. We do a lot of uh, practice session among the trainers. Mm -hmm. uh, we actually do uh, at least two times a month. Oh, okay. Right. right. Twice a month, right. Yeah. Okay, great. And uh, we do a lot of uh, coaching practice, feedback practice, facilitation practice, mm -hmm. using the real contents mm -hmm. and using the real uh, classroom mm -hmm. environment. And we do a lot of uh, practice. Mm -hmm. Yes. How to win friends and influence people has been a continuous bestseller uh, since it was released in 1936 in the States. So everyone's got the book, basically. You know, why do you need training? Why can't you just read the book and get it all from there? Uh, so, so you read a lot of the books, right? Oh, I do. Right? So you remember everything? Ah, no. <laughs> right? And you actually apply those, what you learned from the book in uh, reality? Not everything. Right. That, that's the whole point, you know. That's the... Uh, what we call knowledge trap. Knowledge trap. Knowledge trap. What's that about? So we learn from the book. We can learn from the book, for example, how do we friend and influence people, and we understand that the contents of the book, right? But it's in here, yeah. not in here. Uh -huh. Okay. So we can't use it in a, for example, in a business. Mm -hmm. For example, we read a book and understand the importance of smile. Mm -hmm importance of uh, have a genuine interest to others, mm -hmm. uh, how to lead people, mm -hmm. but we can't actually apply mm -hmm. in a business reality mm -hmm. because it's there, it's a real, mm -hmm. it's not an easy mm -hmm. thing. So we need help to do actually to apply those uh, what they learn. Mm -hmm. So that's why we need uh, uh, training, we are, we are here. Mm -hmm. And in the training, we, as a trainer, coach participants mm -hmm. how to apply those mm -hmm. concepts or how to apply those principles mm -hmm. because they, they have no idea mm -hmm. sometimes. Mm -hmm. So we coach them and, for example, uh, if someone wants to learn how to present more effectively, mm -hmm. how to speak more effectively, mm -hmm. and we coach them. Mm -hmm. it's, it's not a book. It's in a book, actually, mm -hmm. but they can't do it for, the, for themselves. Mm -hmm. So that's what we hear. Yeah, it's a bit like you have the, uh, the TED talk or right. the magazine article or the book yeah. and you read it, but you actually, if you don't apply it, it it's meaningless, isn't it? Right. Yeah. Okay. That's right. So we have a lot of contents, you know, the iPads or iPhones and mm -hmm. apps yeah. or uh, their books, e-books. Yeah. A lot of the contents is going on, but uh, if we can't apply those concepts, mm -hmm. nothing happens. Yeah. Right. Taking that, you sort of talk about the knowledge trap of just 
having access to it but not implementing it. Right, that's, that's right. right. Exactly true. Right. Of the Fortune 500 companies, 90% are using Dale Carnegie right. training. Why is that? Mm. It's simply because we are very tactical. Uh, I used to be a HR manager for IT company, mm -hmm. and I done a lot of training. Uh, and those training is kind of blah blah theory, mm -hmm. blah blah technique. A lot of uh, uh, theories are going on in the training, mm -hmm. but actually it's not easy to apply. Mm -hmm. But our training is everything is really practical. For example, oh, soft skills. Soft skills. Uh -huh. For example, uh, take a look at the uh, their, their kind of human relation principles. Mm -hmm. It's really specific action, mm -hmm. like smile, mm -hmm. like uh, uh, make feel them important, mm -hmm. or uh, don't argue with somebody. Mm -hmm. It's very, very, very practical ideas. Mm -hmm. So that means people can apply those concepts easily mm -hmm. in the reality. That's the main reason. I think that's the very uh, major reason why the five, Fortune 500 is using us. I guess that's an issue, isn't it? You, you can have a lot of theory, and I've been to lots of business executive training courses, Harvard, Stanford, you know, some of the top schools, and it's great. But it's very macro, and when you come back to your desk, it's hard to instantly implement things. And what you're talking about here is for the Fortune 500 companies, they see the people, they send on the courses getting immediate application and therefore immediate outputs. That's right. Mm. So we actually discuss about the contents and not just explain the contents. We actually, uh, with the participants, discuss mm -hmm. and learn from the activities. Mm -hmm. That's why they get it they realize that, oh, this is what we need. Mm -hmm. This is how we apply. Mm -hmm. That's very important thing in that. Japan loves lecture, you know. A lot of the training in Japan is all, you know, the sensei, the, the instructor, talk, talk, talk. Yeah. What's Dale Carnegie doing that's different? Okay. okay. Uh, we have a principles mm -hmm. to teach something, uh, what we call 10% trainer talk, mm -hmm. and rest of the 9% participants talk. Oh. The trainer should only be talking for 10% of the time, the participants should be talking for 90 percent of the time. Right. Right. Because you know, once the trainer or teachers talk a lot, mm -hmm. what happens? Mm -hmm. Probably all the participants fell asleep, and you know, they're just like that. Mm -hmm. Right. So it's no results. Mm -hmm. So that's why we talk less and have them talk, have them busy, have them learn something. So the the instructors guiding the people to do interactivity. Right. So it sounds like there's a lot of interaction going on yes. in the classroom. Yeah, yeah. That's because we want to engage people mm -hmm. and we want to uh, make them realize, oh, this is important. This is what we need. Mm -hmm. And what about the sense of ownership too? Because when it's the, the teacher talking all the time, the teacher owns all the content. Mm -hmm. So you're trying to get the transfer of the ownership out of the teacher owning it to the participants owning it. So how do you do that? Yeah. We facilitate the discussion mm -hmm. and we facilitate the uh, their classroom. Mm -hmm. And in order to do so, we actually ask a lot of questions mm -hmm. based on their business context. Mm -hmm. Once we ask the question, they start to think mm -hmm. about how to do that, what's the difficulties, mm -hmm. how to resolve that. Mm -hmm. That's a very important thing. Have them think about it. That creates the ownership. That's a sort of self-discovery right. methodology. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Uh -huh. And I guess in terms of uh, you know permanent learning, that's a very effective methodology because a lot of times it's in one ear and it's out the other. You know, if you ask people a month later after training, what do you remember? Often they don't remember anything. You know, it's all gone. So I guess you're trying to use a different methodology to get them to retain the information and then use it. Uh, in a in a classroom, we always always have them commit something mm. to use different to use something different way, and that's very critical thing. Have them commit something because uh, otherwise they don't do anything differently. Straight back to their desk and. 
keep doing the same things right. in the same way and getting the same results. So right. you want to step it up and have a, a better outcome, right? Exactly. Uh, okay. And also we encourage uh, companies to follow them up mm -hmm. because once they finish courses, mm -hmm. everyone tends to get back to the normal, regular job, right? So we really encourage uh, a classroom or uh, the companies to use us as a follow-up tool. Mm -hmm. Because once follow-up uh, going on, they keep learning. They keep applying those concepts they learned. That's very critical. Tell us a little bit about the curriculum of Dale Carnegie Training. What sort of training do you provide? Okay. Uh, basically, we do soft skills. And our curriculum areas consists of six parts. Mm -hmm. One is team member engagement. Mm -hmm. This is really what we do very good mm -hmm. because uh, we've done one, over 100 years mm -hmm. with teaching how to interact with people, mm -hmm. how to deal with people, mm -hmm. how to uh, uh, build a very good team. Mm -hmm. That's what we're doing. Mm -hmm. For example, you know, uh, sometimes we uh, m and Merging is going on in the company, and two groups cannot go well each other. Yeah. You know, it's very typical. Isn't right, it's a big problem. That's right. So it's not team building is going on. So that's why we're there, and teach how to uh, build relationship with each other, and how to build the teamwork, and that's what we're doing very well. A lot of companies too, you know, the senior leadership changes, and then the direction of the company changes, or uh, they want to introduce a new culture. I guess that team engagement would be important for getting people behind those sorts of things too. That's right, exactly true. And also that, uh, in that sense, we do leadership curriculum. Okay. So that's also very important in the, in the organization because leadership is really strong influence mm -hmm. to the organization. Mm -hmm. So we teach how to lead people, how to manage people, mm -hmm. how to motivate them, that's what we do well. Japan too, uh, there's a lot of demand lately for more leadership training. It seems that succession planning yes. is becoming more important. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yes. Uh, now, I see a lot of companies suffering from or having difficulties uh, creating new leaders mm -hmm. because uh, they have cultures, but, but they don't have any cultures to develop leaders. Mm -hmm. So that's why they need someone who can do that. Mm -hmm. And that's why they choose us. Mm. And I guess in that leadership development, um, you've got uh, new leaders, uh, sort of mid-level leaders. Are there different programs for, for those different groups? Yes, uh, it depends on the, uh, what they need. Mm -hmm. So we cover whole area of the leadership. Senior leadership, middle leadership, junior leadership, we cover all of them, right. And what are some of the other curriculum areas that you're looking after? Uh, we provide presentation curriculum area. Which Japan surely needs some yeah. more of that, yep. Yeah. Absolutely. And you know, uh, the accounting training is basically uh, used to be uh, their public speaking school. Oh, 102 years, years ago years. when it started, right? Yeah. It was, yes. New York and YMCA, yeah. Dale Carnegie studied uh, the public speaking courses. Mm -hmm. And that's the origin mm -hmm. of Dale Carnegie training. It's a long that's Yeah, a long so we know that. We know how to do it. We know how to present in front of people effectively, mm -hmm. how to persuade people, mm -hmm. right? So that's, that's what we provide. Mm -hmm. And the, all the participants are really happy about our uh, presentation program, mm -hmm. especially. And what are some other areas? So we've got uh, leadership, team engagement, presentations. And also sales. Oh, so, okay. Yes. Uh, sales In sales, we provide sales curriculum area over uh, 70, 70 years, mm -hmm. over 70 years. Mm -hmm. And we started uh, sales advantage courses 72 years ago mm -hmm. now. And we do well. And uh, I think sales is all about human relation, mm -hmm. how to connect with people. Trust. Right, trust, mm -hmm. rapport, what we say, and how to get the interest mm -hmm. from them, mm -hmm. and how to persuade yes. about the solutions. Yes. So it's all about the human relation, mm -hmm. 
It's all about the communication skills. So that's why our sales program is really strong. What about your B2C and B2B? Yeah, we, we do both, actually. Yeah, so the B2C and B2B, it's actually the, basically the same thing. Mm -hmm. The selling process is really the similar, mm -hmm. but uh, the customer is different. Mm -hmm. So the sales process has to be changed. Mm -hmm. So the framework's the same, but the detail changes. Or context is oh, different, right. So what's the sixth area that you cover? Process improvement of human side. Okay. Yes. So for example, uh, we uh, introduce innovation. So some of the clients wants to be innovative, mm -hmm. wants to have innovative uh, culture in the organization, and we do that. Innovation is not just uh, the concept. It's all about the uh, 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 teamwork, how to create innovative culture in organization, how to interact with people to be innovative. That's our idea. So we teach how to do some uh, very effective meeting for the innovation and how to apply those ideas, in, uh, implement those ideas in, uh, in the work. So that's what we teach. So you have an innovation framework plus you have that human dimension of how to actually work together to right. use the framework. Right, that's okay. right. Because the concept is just the concept. Yes. Uh, if we can't do well in uh, interacting with people or hundreding people, uh, innovation doesn't work. Mm -hmm. Often with uh, innovation, you know, brainstorming stuff, the, the talkative uh, dominant people tend to take up all the airtime. And so very, very few ideas really ever come out. What do you do about that type of process? Yeah, what we call green light thinking mm -hmm. and red light thinking. In the green light thinking, it's all about the brainstorming. You know, uh, it's it's all about the quantity. 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 The numbers of ideas. Yeah, over over the ideas. No judgment. Yet. No judgment. No criticizing. Mm -hmm. No nothing. It's just all about the quantity. Volume. Yeah, and we concentrate those green light thinking first, mm -hmm. and then after the green light thinking, we do red light thinking, which is judgment right. or uh, uh, exactly. prioritizing yeah. or yeah. right. Yeah. Yeah. So. Once we separate those thinking mechanism, thinking process, the uh, innovation or uh, brainstorming works. What about the, as I said before, we've got some dominant people who, you know, only their ideas get up on the whiteboard type of thing. How do you help the people who are rather quiet or maybe a bit shy? How do you get them involved? Yeah, we coach them a lot. It's coaching. If, uh, if uh, someone really dominant mm -hmm. and talkative, mm -hmm. we talk, tell people, uh, no, okay, let's listen to other people's opinion. Okay. Or, uh, on the other hand, some people are not so talkative, mm -hmm. silent, quiet, mm -hmm. and we encourage people to talk mm -hmm. and appreci appreciate those ideas mm -hmm. each other. Mm -hmm. That's what we do. Mm -hmm. I guess in the first stage, you're not critiquing any ideas, so it's a, a safe environment to just push out your idea right. and then the evaluation comes later. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's right, that's the key thing. Okay, thank you. Dale Training has offices in 90 different countries around the world. What does that mean for clients? Uh, for some of the clients have uh, a lot of offices in global, and if they want to have uh, uh, the same training in global, for example, uh, we had a client like a, a pharmaceutical company mm -hmm. and they actually merged other company mm -hmm. and some of the employees are really nervous mm -hmm. because the M&A &A, mm -hmm. and uh, they feel very stressful mm -hmm. so they actually the headquarters thinks uh, they need stress management program mm -hmm. in global uh, okay. anywhere in global okay. they have uh, over 10 places office in global and they choose uh, their kind of training mm -hmm. and we did the uh, two hours uh, stress management program mm -hmm. so actually the US headquarters creates the uh, uh, the contents mm -hmm. and they train the trainers mm -hmm. for this project mm -hmm. so that we can deliver the program at the same level mm -hmm. anywhere in the world mm -hmm. 
and we did that. We did that. Clients loves it. What about the other way? What about Japanese companies who recently are buying up companies overseas? They're creating global networks for themselves. Are you doing the same thing for them? Yeah, exactly the same. So yes, uh, as you said, Japanese company, uh, you know, reaching global right now, and they have to train people, not just Japan, but also other regions mm -hmm. in global. Mm -hmm. So especially, you know, they're uh, creating the cultures mm -hmm. or uh, creating the directions, mm -hmm. you know. So they need the same content, same quality uh, in global. Mm -hmm. I remember there was, uh, a couple of years ago, there was a German company, it was like 31 countries mm -hmm. around the world, and then a Danish company was 34 countries around the world, so it's a pretty substantial program rollout, and, and I guess you're delivering the Japan end in Japanese to the Japanese staff. Yes. So, it's again, it's global reach mm -hmm. and local touch. Right. So they create it, and they reach global, anywhere global, because they have a, we have offices mm -hmm. in global. So we train people in local, I mean, we train trainers, mm -hmm. right? And how to deliver that, mm -hmm. and also local touch. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the, in the reality, the participants will be all Japanese. Mm -hmm. So we have to be able to adopt mm -hmm. those contents mm -hmm. so that they can receive those concepts. Just talk a little bit about the trainers. How many trainers do you have? How many do Japanese? How many do English? Uh, we have 40 trainers in Japan and 80% uh, trainers are Japanese speaking trainers, which native Japanese trainers. So the remainders are native speakers of English? For sure. Yes, English speakers. Right. So it's mainly, you can do both, but it's mainly Japanese. Right, exactly. I'm sure there are many, many courses that are run by uh, Dale Carnegie that are very popular. What would some of those most popular courses be? Obviously, Dale Carnegie course. Mm -hmm. It's very long history courses. It's over uh, 100 years. Oh, yeah. that must be the longest running course in history, right, I would exactly. imagine, yeah. For example, uh, uh, Warren Buffett mm -hmm. took the course. Oh, the Warren Buffett, the famous Warren Buffett, the investor. Yes. Right. And actually, he did uh, Dale Carnegie course when he was uh, 20s. And uh, before he takes, uh, took the uh, Dale Carnegie course, he didn't even, he couldn't even uh, talk about his name in front of the people. <laughs> he was very shy and uh, uh, he was, uh, he said that uh, his communication skills were so bad. Yeah. But after he takes Dale Carnegie training, he completely changed. That's what he tells us. And he can uh, motivate people, he can persuade people, and the whole thing is changed. That's 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 why, you know, he recommended many people to take the economy course now. Right. Right. True believer. Right. Yeah, yeah. What other courses do you have? And also, uh, we have high impact presentation course, mm. which is really focused on uh, uh, presentation skills, mm. which consists two days. Uh, okay. Intensive mm. course. Yeah. And uh, participants will be doing the uh, seven talk, mm -hmm. seven presentation mm -hmm. in the, during the uh, two days. Mm -hmm. And we actually uh, tape, tape them. Video, the video, whole video the whole thing. Yeah. And not just video, we actually review the video mm -hmm. with the trainers. Mm -hmm. And so that the participants... So you have more than one trainer? Uh, there's two trainers, two actually. Trainers. Okay. So we do the uh, review them. Mm -hmm. We actually uh, review the videos so that they can realize, they can notice uh, what's the difficulties, what's the challenge uh, do they have. And after that, they come, come back to the room and the uh, presentation do it again. And in the presentation, not just them present, actually the other trainer coach them hard, really hard. What we say, just like uh, you know, the balloon. After the review room, they come back and do it again mm -hmm. with the very strong coaching. Right. right. And so they, they have seven different presentations they prepare. What sort of th things are they doing? First, uh, they do, 
first impression, positive first impression. Building a, a, f a positive first impression. Yes. Well, that's very important. Yeah, this, because this is very critical for the presentation. You know, people instantly notice, uh, you know, judge yeah, the yeah. Pres presenters. So that's why their first impression is really critical. And other thing is, uh, you know, we are presenting something. Sometimes the information is really complex. Complex, uh, complex difficult, difficult to understand. Mm -hmm. Specialist type of information. Right, technical things, yeah. right. So that's why we teach people how to present difficult information or complex information effectively so that the audience can uh, follow that. What about Q&A? I notice that with a lot of speakers, when they're speaking, they're in control of the material. But when it gets to Q&A, it's like a street fight, you know, there's yeah. no rules. So what about that part? Actually, the, the challenges for the Q&A part is because it's interactive. Mm -hmm. Presentation, presentation is kind of a one way. Yeah. It's not actually one way, it's interactive way, but uh, it's kind of one way. But the, in terms of the interaction, the Q&A is whole interaction. So when we uh, have the hostile audience, mm -hmm. it's very risky, mm -hmm. right? So we teach people how to deal with the, uh, the difficult question. Mm -hmm. We do cushions. Mm -hmm. We do uh, uh, provide the, uh, the uh, positive message first, mm -hmm. and da da da. Mm -hmm. And those, we have very strong uh, process to, to respond to those difficult questions. And those, uh, those hostile questions don't necessarily have to be in a public arena. It could be, could be a meeting with the board of directors. It could be a meeting with your, the chairman or the big boss asking yeah, a really tough yeah, question, right? That's, that's going on in the, in, the, in the company. Yeah, so a useful, useful uh, facility to have at your disposal. Right, yeah, right. yeah, yeah. You're a training director. You've been doing this for a very long time. You've got a lot of insight into the process. For companies who are trying to choose a training company, do you have any advice for them, any hints for them and what to look for? Uh, we have many hints. Uh, among, above all, they have to choose very good trainers mm -hmm. because uh, the training is all about the trainers and contents. And trainer is a big thing because once they, a trainer talks a lot, like doing some lot of lectures, the audience fell asleep or doesn't listen, right? So the res result doesn't change. So good trainer, engage people, facilitate discussion, and coach people. It's all about the interaction based on the, the participants' business context. That's, that's what clients have to look at to choose the right training companies. <laughs>